Everyone's favorite Swiss Army knife weapon from Masa Hunter 4 Ultimate is back, and instead of just getting nerfed to death, it's gone through a redesign that brings it back down to earth but keeps it exciting, versatile, powerful, and actually even more fluid than it's ever been before. Welcome to my guide on the charge blade. The charge blade has a sword mode and an axe mode. It's the way that these two are intertwined that make it a dynamic and exciting weapon. If you look at the design, the shield that you have in your hand is actually the axe head, which is pretty cool, huh? The concept of the weapon is actually pretty simple. As you hit monsters with the sword, it'll gather energy, which you can then transfer into the files shown on the upper left of the screen. In axe mode, you can then use these files of energy to unleash powerful attacks. Once you run out, go back into sword mode and charge up some more. It should come to no surprise that in Japan, we don't call it the charge blade, we call it the charge axe. The charge blade is a little complex at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is an absolute joy to use. In this video, we're going to be going in pretty in-depth, and we're going to take it in pieces, so let's start out with the guild style. There's no better way to start than to go over both modes of play, so let's start out with the sword mode. Your draw attack is a nice charge and slash. You can do this move with your weapon out by simply pressing X plus A. Your idle X button attack is just a standard downward slash. Like most weapons in Monster Hunter, there's a 3 hit combo, so this is the first hit of it. Press X once more to do the upward slash. This actually has really good reach, so you'd be surprised you might be able to hit a monster like Rathalos out of the air using it. And the final hit of the X button combo is the round slash. There are two major things that we need to talk about this move. First, and you may have noticed me already doing it, but if you press left or right on the circle pad and press B after an attack, you'll do a sidestep. This allows you to reposition yourself, evade attacks, and cancel out of the ending animation for an attack pretty easily. If you press X after a sidestep, you'll actually go right into this round slash. The second thing to talk about is that sexy gleam of light that you see at the end of this move. Now if you look at the animation here in slow-mo, your hunter is actually putting the shield in front of them when they do the attack. If you get hit during this point, it'll count as if you guarded the attack, and as long as the attack wasn't that big, you'll just plow right through and continue through with your attack. This really allows the weapon to be used more aggressively, which is awesome. This is also what we call guard points. Okay, moving on. Now because this is a 3 hit combo, you can substitute the first hit with other different moves. Here it is, just the normal XXX. Here it is if we start with the X plus A button attack. If you do a forward evade first, that counts as attack 1 as well, and you'll go right into the upward slash and then the round slash. The real bread and butter move of the sword mode is the charged hit. Hold down the A button and then release. Not only is it super powerful, but it also charges energy in your blade really fast, which we'll get to soon. Don't overcharge or undercharge though, because you will do a weaker attack if you do. Now there's one final move to cover in this mode, which is the shield thrust. Press X plus A after another attack to do it. There's no way to do this move from idle. This move actually does two hits, so you want to do it when you're really up and close. So it's also really good for elemental charge blades, as it allows you to rack up hits really fast. If you notice, there's kind of a shell that flies out in the animation, and that's a hint at another underlying mechanic, which we'll be covering later in this tutorial really like about this move is that if you put in input on the circle pad like left or right, you can actually adjust your position when you do the attack. Now one of the great things about the sword mode is that you can do that charged attack and the shield thrust after any move, meaning that you can mix and match moves over and over again to really do almost infinite combos. It's so beautiful, isn't it? And of course, we can't forget you do have a standard jump attack. Okay, now before we go into the charging mechanic, which technically belongs to sword mode, let's take a look how you morph into the axe mode and what standard attacks we have there. At any time during sword mode, just hold R and press X to morph into the axe. This is actually a pretty powerful morph attack. 
You can draw to the axe mode directly by pressing R plus X plus A. Notice that you also get a guard point during the start of this animation. In Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, you only got it if you weren't guarding first and you hit all the buttons at the same time, but in this game, you can just be holding R and then hit uh, X and you'll be fine. That wonderful down slash you can actually do by holding forward on the circle pad and pressing X. It's a little bit slower than the actual draw version of it. Your idle X attack is a slow upward chop that reaches really high into the air. And if you press X after it, you'll do the downward chop. So this is kind of a two hit combo that you can just loop by pressing X over and over again. After an evade, you can press X to do a weak side chop. The real power of the axe mode is in the A button attacks. These get super powered using the energy that you charge up in your files, which we'll cover soon. But we can still perform the attacks without any files charged up, although they are a little bit weaker. They count as a 3 move combo. Press A once to do the elemental attack number 1. If you press forward on the circle pad when you press A, you'll actually move a little bit forward during the attack, so do that if you need to reposition. Press A a second time to do elemental attack 2, which is a really powerful, wide reaching double swing. Since the A moves count as a combo, you can press A after any other axe attack or an evade to go right into this second move. One very popular loop on a downed monster is the upward chop using X, then A to do the double swing, then X again, and just rinse and repeat. Okay, the final hit of the combo is Elemental Attack 3, which we all like to call the Super Burst. This attack is super powerful, and it will automatically morph you back into blade mode at the end. You can actually do this attack from idle position if you just press X and A. We'll be revisiting these three A button attacks once we learn about the charging mechanic. Your jump attack in X mode is just a nice big chop, um, but it does do really large mounting damage. Now there's one last thing to cover in axe mode before we go on to the charging mechanic, and that is how to morph back into sword mode. At any time, and I mean any time, simply press the R button and boom, you'll do a morph attack. If you do it in the air, it's actually a little bit weaker. Notice that you get a guard point at the end of this morph attack, so if a monster is coming at you and you're in the slower axe mode, you could just tap R to morph into sword and guard the attack as the monster's coming right at you. Now with the ability to morph to axe mode and back into sword mode mid combo as many times as you want and being able to do shield thrust and charge attacks you can see you can have a lot of fun with this weapon. <laughs> I think you get the idea. Time to put the charge in charge blade. After you hit a monster a few times with your sword the files on the upper left of the screen will start to glow yellow. If you keep hitting monsters they will start to glow red. Be careful though, because after this, if you keep attacking, it'll go into a charged overheat state, and all of your attacks will bounce until you put that energy away and charge it into your weapon. To charge energy, all you have to do is hold R and press the A button. A yellow glow will charge three files of energy, and a red glow will charge all five. Now, with energy stored up in our files, there are some new things that we can do with the weapon. First, let's go back and look at those elemental attacks for the axe. When you press A in Axe Mode to do Elemental Attack 1 and you have a file, it'll use one of them and release a single blast of energy along with the attack. If your charge blade is listed as an impact type, that blast deals 5% of your attack power as raw damage. It also deals 30 stun damage if you hit the head of a monster and 5 exhaust, which can really add up. If your charge blade is listed as an elemental file type, it'll do an explosion of elemental damage, equal to 3 times the elemental power of your weapon. So let's say your weapon has 20 fire, that one blast will do 60 fire damage. Elemental attack is where it gets really interesting, because with only one file of usage, you'll do 2 blasts of energy. And elemental attack 3, the super burst, you guessed it, it does 3 blasts of energy at the price of only one file. And instead of being only worth 42 motion value, the attack itself jumps up to 75. 
These blasts for Elemental Attack 3 are more powerful as well. They are worth 10% of your power as raw damage if you're using Impact type, and if you're using Elemental type, it does anywhere by between 3 times or 4.5. I've honestly found a lot of conflicting information, so I'm not 100% sure. If you have an opening when you charge your energy in Sword Mode, you can press A from there to go straight into the Axe combo from Blade Mode. Since Elemental Attack 1 isn't that powerful, you can see why pressing A after a different Axe attack to do Elemental Attack 2 is a very popular way to go, or just lining yourself up and pressing X plus A to do the Super Burst at the price of only one file. When you do an attack using a file, you'll consume two units of sharpness instead of one. It's nothing really major or something you need to worry about, but it is worth noting. Also worth noting is that the armor skill artillery does increase the damage of the impact file blast, as well as the feline food skill for artillery. The max cap is 1.4 times damage, so I recommend you just use artillery novice and then eat for the feline skill, and that will give you the maximum bonus if you're someone who likes to go for all these explosions. Okay, so we have a great blade mode, we have an axe mode, we have the ability to charge energy from the blade and then do really big attacks. You'd think that's where they would stop with the weapon, and indeed, that's where they stopped in Monster Hunter 4, which was never released in the West. But we have a whole nother mechanic called the shield charge. So while you're in sword mode, if you have energy charged up in your files, press X plus A after a shield thrust to charge your shield. Basically, you're transferring that energy into the axe head. Your shield will start to glow yellow and this mode lasts for 20 seconds times the number of files that you charged up. So if you had, let's say, 3 files and then you went into the state, you'd have it for 60 seconds. You can actually charge up more energy while you're already in the state to extend it. You can extend it to a maximum of 400 seconds, or that's about 6.5 minutes. Okay, so why would you want to charge your shield and not use all those files to just do elemental attacks? Well, let's go over the benefits. First, your guarding capabilities for the weapon go up, so it's like you have the armor skill guard plus one. This actually puts the charge blade at the same guarding capability as a normal lance. Second, when you do a shield thrust or you press X to do the round slash after a charge, you'll get a free mini explosion, which is worth half the power of a normal axe explosion during the elemental attacks. This can really add up when it comes to stun or elemental damage if you use the shield thrust a lot, especially if you're able to do it to the head of the monster. Third, the file explosions for elemental attacks 1, 2, and 3 get a whopping 35% effect boost. That means for impact types you're going to be doing 35% more stun damage and 35% more exhaust damage, and if you're using an elemental file type charge blade you'll be doing an additional 35% more elemental damage for those blasts. And last but not least, in yellow shield mode, if you press X and A in axe mode or you get to the third hit in the A combo, you'll do that super burst, right? Well that attack now has two variations. You can pull back on the circle pad and press X during the wind up animation to do your normal super burst, which I highly recommend. Or if you just let it go, you'll do a new thing called the ultra burst, which is a super finisher that unloads every single file you have, as well as your shield charge to do a really big attack. When it comes to the number of explosions that you get for the Ultra Burst, it all depends on the number of files that you have charged up. What you do is you take the number of files you have, divide it by 2, and add 1. So if you're only having 5 files, you're going to be doing 3 blasts just like the Super. So it's really not worth giving up your shield charge just to do the stronger version. However, this does pair really well with the Hunter art called Overlimit, which we'll be covering later, which gives you for a limited period of time 10 files instead of 5. Now we'll have to see what happens in Monster Hunter Generations, but in the Japanese version of Monster Hunter Cross, the motion value is 25 and 75. So it's only 25 more motion than the Super Burst, and you lose all your files, and you lose your shield charge. So it's really not worth using. But the guide here does list it as being 257575, so if this was a mistake and they fixed it, then maybe doing Ultra might be a more viable move, but if not, and I consider it probably won't be changed, then you can consider the Ultra Burst kind of a consequence if you do not pull out and do the Super instead. That would make more sense though, as your Axe attacks are already super powered, so abusing this move as well would result in kind of an overpowered issue which the weapon had in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. 
Red Shield Charge. So now that we've covered how awesome Yellow Shield Charge is, it's time to kick it up a notch with Red Shield Charge. During the animation for the Super Burst, press the R button during the windup and you'll cancel out of it and instead put all that highly charged energy into your shield, turning it red. This is a stronger leveled up version of the Sword Mode's Shield Charge. In Red Shield, you get all the benefits of the Yellow Shield Mode and a bunch of other ones as well. First, when you guard, you no longer lose sharpness to your weapon at all, and you'll get a free explosion to every single guard in every single guard point you do. These are the same power as the Elemental 1 attack explosions, not half the value as it was in the yellow mode. In second, every single attack that you do in Axe mode gets a 15% power boost. Wowza! Red Shield is really where it's all at, so you may ask yourself, why the heck would I ever want to use the Yellow Shield mode? And the simple answer is you don't. But there are some benefits to knowing about that move. Getting Yellow Shield is as simple as just pressing X plus A after a shield thrust. If you go into Red Shield mode after that, any remaining time you had on your Yellow mode gets transferred to the Red mode, which is kind of nice. And the big one is once you're in Red Shield mode, you can do the Yellow Shield mode charge and it'll extend your Red Shield time, not downgrade you to Yellow. Red Shield Mode is insane. All it requires is that you morph into Axe Mode and press R during a super windup, and boom, you're in it. So if you ask me, the requirement is pretty easy. Okay, finally, now that we know all these moves, I can quick talk about guarding. If you hold the R button, you can guard. The guarding capabilities is the same as a greatsword, so it's between a sword and a shield and a lance. In yellow or red shield mode, though, it goes up as if you had the armor skill guard plus one making it the same power as a lance. After a guard, you can press X to morph to axe, B to do a sidestep, A to go right into a charge, and X plus A to do the charge and attack. You can no longer go into the super or ultra burst from a guard, and let's face it, that was broken as all get out in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Okay, let's do a quick review before we move on to the other styles. The sword mode has a standard 3 hit combo and the ability to use charge attacks and shield thrusts whenever the heck you like. Once you have energy glowing and charged up, hold the R button and press the A button to transfer that energy into your files. You can then either use that energy to charge your shield in sword mode for a weak charge, or cancel out of a super burst in axe mode for a strong charge. If you have files in stock in axe mode, all your A button attacks will do more damage. Finally, there are some times during an animation where your shield is moving forward, and if you get hit during this point, it'll count as if you guarded it and you'll plow right through, as long as the attack that was hitting you was small. Now on to Striker Style. The biggest change to Striker Style is that you lose the shield thrust, and as a result, you now lose the ability to do the weak yellow shield charge, and you only have the red shield. But that's not really a big deal, right? However, as a bonus, you do get two very cool new features. First, the X plus A charge and attack for the sword mode gets a guard point. This makes it much more safe to easily just plow through and attack monsters. Second, and this is really big, when you're in red shield mode, all your axe attacks do 20% more damage instead of 15% like all the other styles. For striker, it's all about the axe. Since you can use three arts, Ultra Burst just might have some meaning if you pair it with the Overlimit skill that gives you 10 files for a limited period of time. Personally, I like that the Axe attacks are all much more powerful because it gives a little bit more meaning to using the X button attacks instead of just only going for the elemental ones. Aerial Style For Aerial, you'll lose the ability to do the charge attack on the ground by holding A. Now, if you do the Aerial Vault, you can now press X during the air to do a strong charge slash. This charges up your files pretty fast, and you can continue the combo once you hit the ground. After the Aerial Vault, you can press X in Axe Mode to do an Aerial Axe Attack, or you can press X plus A while you're in Axe Mode to do the Aerial Super Burst. This is worth 42 motion without files and 90 width. This is an incredibly satisfying move to do once you get used to it. I received a special dunk video from good friend and Puggy Platoon member Apex Gaming, who is really an amazing artist when it comes to doing fashionable kills in Monster Hunter. Check this out. 
<laughs> the pickle did not have a chance. Please check out his channel and subscribe by clicking the link in the description down in this video. He has some really fun, short, and easily digestible videos that are just fun to watch. For the aerial style, if you charge your shield, there's no way to opt out of the ultra burst when you're in the air. So this style is actually more simplistic because it comes highly recommended that you don't charge your shield at all. Just focus on charging up your files and the aerial super burst. I swear it sounds simple and lackluster on paper, but oh boy does aerial charge blade feel good when you play it. Adept style. In Adapt Style, you'll lose the ability to charge into a yellow charge, but as we've already covered before, that's not an issue because red is where it's all at. And in return, you get so much. First, in Sword Mode, you now get a new guard point when you hold down the A button to do a charged hit. This guard point lasts for quite some time, so it basically means you're going to have a really hard time getting interrupted if you're doing your charge shot, which is amazing. Second, in Sword Mode, you get the Adept Guard. Right after you guard, you have two choices. You can press A to do a quick charged hit, which bypasses the charge up animation. Or if you already have files charged up, press the X button after an add up guard and you'll immediately do a charge attack. This is also a powerful attack, but it also charges your axe into red mode without even needing to go into axe mode first. Yeah, that is good. So not only do you get the add up guards, but in axe mode, you get add up evades. After an evade, press X to go and do the downward chop. Or you can press A after an adept evade to go right into elemental attack 2. The adept charge blade is simply insane. If you can master the complexity of the weapon, you will feel like an absolute god using this style. Before we go and review how we think about each style, let's check out all the hunter arts that it has. To be honest, they're not that good. Which makes sense considering how awesome and versatile the weapon is already. Energy Blade. This move is actually pretty darn hard to hit the monster due to the length and the angle of the attack, but it does have a very large blade swipe and the strength and the length of that blade depends on the number of files that you have charged up at the time you do this attack. This attack will use all your files in one fell swoop. Here are the motion values at each level. It is worth noting that this attack does not get a boost from the red shield, so don't think that you're going to be doing 15 or 20% more power because of the red shield mode. Overlimit. At level 1, for 3 minutes you'll get 7 files instead of 5. At level 2, you'll get 9 files for 3 minutes, and at level 3, you'll get 10 files for 2.5 minutes. Now why you would think that it would take a really long time to charge all 10 files up, Pair this with the load up skill for amazing results. With load up in this game, a yellow glow will charge 5 files and a red glow will charge 10 files in one shot. This is best used when paired with the energy blade so you can do more damage, but it also makes the ultra burst actually kind of worth using. Healing Bottle For a limited period of time, when you do the attack to charge your shield, either by pressing X plus A after a shield thrust or R during a super burst animation, you'll instead do a healing slash. At level 3, the round slash will heal everybody 10 health times the number of files that you used, and the range is wider with each level of the healing bottle art. Do note that this does not get a bonus from the wide range skill though. This art uses up all the files that you had just to heal people that are around you, so it kinda sucks in my opinion. And now some closing thoughts. I won't sugarcoat it, the hunter arts are not all that awesome, so it really comes down to the styles because just having one hunter art might be sufficient for you. Guild style is solid for elemental type uh, charge blades and the striker is fabulous if you really like spamming axe attacks and taking advantage of that additional damage. Aerial is an absolute ball to use and adept is just insane. To me, I, I would have to say my favorite is Adept and Aerial. I can't choose between the two. They're both just so much fun. When it comes to revisions from Monster Hunter for Ultimate, the Charge Blade did get some redesigns because frankly, it was broken. Every guard point in Monster Hunter for Ultimate stopped you as if you did a full guard. And in that game, you were able to do a Super Burst or Ultra Burst straight from a guard, meaning that that's all anybody ever did because it was strong, powerful, and abusable. The new guard points I really like as they help make the weapon more fluid and aggressive and it really opens the door to a more personalized way of using the weapon. 
I really love the charge blade and it's super strong in this game so please don't worry about people who will yell and cry saying oh my god it was nerfed to death or anything like that. It got a redesign which happens and it just so happens that the redesign is still pretty darn good. It gets some getting used to the complexity and the sheer variation of the stuff that you can do with this weapon but that is what makes it such a free form and powerful weapon to begin with. I spent a lot of time trying to make sure that this tutorial was accurate, but be due to the complexity of the weapon, I'm sure there's something that I forgot to mention or maybe came off a little wrong, so please let people know down in comments if you notice anything that wasn't mentioned. Also let me know which style you're most excited to use with the charge blade, and if you like this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please do, it really means a lot. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and until next time, happy hunting.